Hey everybody, welcome to the Free Mind Podcast. It is Thursday, February 22nd. We have Rudy Aldana from Parch Spirits Company here today. Let's jump right in and check out Rudy's story. All right, so my name is Rudy Aldana. Um, I am the co-founder and CEO of uh, Parch Spirits Co. Um, we founded Parch uh, back in in 2020 um that was when i basically incorporated the business however uh we went into market only until 2022 that was the latter half of 2022 uh so it's been a, bit, been a business that only for about 17 months in the market so it's a pretty new um and exciting business yeah so we cut the i mean we launched the business i mean in the tail end and I would say when the world was going going back to normal, um, there was a lot of um, trend and movement around uh, e-commerce. And that's where, you know, we thought that things were going to go that way. Uh, But definitely um, brick and mortar started to gain strength and e-commerce started to lose momentum. Um, So the business, we needed to shift right away. Um, And I'll say that I, I... tell you about that background because uh, that really shows how you um in less than a week two weeks you, you need to change um a bit of your direction not any strategic one from a, a point of view of your brand your product your thesis around it but it is more about like how are you going to bring it to market so that is the one that always it always changes and it always you're dependent on where you're authorized, where you're placed, where you can expand availability. And that's, um, of course, the name of the game, this, this first months of the business. So we started the business. Um, so I have to say, I, I founded the business with, um, my business partner, Isla Byrne. Uh, she is a, um, uh, a former veteran uh, from Diageo as well. Um, and she led innovation and consumer understanding. And she was a, Basically, uh, as I call it, the, 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 the mother or the grandmother of many, many um, innovations that we see in the marketplace. And she was always uh, thinking about um, uh, looking at new trends and the low and no alcohol movement was starting to pop up. Uh, we we're talking about five, even even a bit more years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, now it's coming like six, around six years ago. So um, I, um, I'll tell you more about the story in a little bit, but uh, the expansion of business, uh, it went from just uh, launch it and launch it with um, a great support from one uh, specialty um, space, uh, retail space um, uh, called Foxtrot. Uh, they um, uh, looked at us and, and, and they deemed us as one of the winners of up and commerce of what we're trying to do. And that gave us a, a bit of a platform to get ourselves out there. And from there, we started. So we started with, let's say, 20, 20 uh, locations uh, with them ordering just like, you know, one case a week uh, of, of one of our products, our cocktails. And then it started to grow and the momentum into the non-alcoholic bottle shops, specialty retail and natural stores. So we were very um, proud that in this time in these 17 months um and even you know sooner than that we got whole, whole foods in southern california we got sprouts to be a permanent placement as well nationally we were able to get i mean beautiful accounts like mom's uh organic market which is close to uh potentially the area that you're in or, or at least in um in philly and then also uh texas like central market and those are like you know kind of the those right places that you want to be where consumers are really thinking about twice of drinking alcohol or either they are trying to moderate or they're trying to quit altogether um and every single city has brought in a new non-alcoholic bottle shop um and and this is a wonderful community and and to all the uh, it's all the people that have made a uh, complete um, life change and get into development of non-alcoholic um, products. Uh, so you'll see things in in Texas, you see things in LA, you see things in 
in New York, of course, and, and great um, outlets that, that they are very community driven and they are led by the founders. So that was another kind of boost that we had uh, and very important. And the other ones, the, the ones that I mentioned earlier, were more around the scale. Those ones that give you a bit of a scale, a bit more of a presence, getting into a, a big distributor and starting to go from there. And the expansion has been now um, to the point that we are about 1,200 um, doors, uh, which is great. And then we are expecting in this next couple of months to uh, add at least uh, 50% more. Uh, so that would put us in a, in a good um, space and, and a good place where consumers, um, at least uh, some of our you know, desired consumers, targeted consumers, we, we, we like to be in. So... That is um, uh, our expansion. We are a small um, and, and but mighty uh, team. Uh, we work remotely. We are based our office in Tucson in Arizona because all our provenance uh, from a brand perspective, from an ingredient um, development perspective is, is all there. Uh, so it's a Southwestern uh, brand, but uh, we are all over the place. So uh, I think that's... Um, uh, top line summary for you, Nate. Thank Absolutely. you for asking. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. And that gives me a good expansion as far as there. And how many out of the 1,200 locations, how many states are you currently in? Well, we we, we count them all. I mean, it, it, it would be about like 46. I mean, the beauty about non-alcoholic is that it can transcend um, borders, right? It can go and cross uh, border lines and, and state lines and, and without a problem. Um, and like alcohol, I come also from a background of um, spirits and most of my career. So definitely, I mean, the beauty of non-alcoholic products is that you can ship anywhere. You can promote uh, uh, sincerely and, and you can really promote responsible drinking. <laughs> and, and you can just really talk about um, uh, the benefits that you're trying to portray with your brand, um, and, you know, all um, nationwide. Yeah, and where um, so you prior to this, were you were with Diageo, and then um, so what was your role at Diageo? Because we're kindred spirits, so all the wholesalers I've ever worked for were Diageo. So I've been to all the trade shows and all that stuff. So we're, yeah, we're yeah, working, great. You know, in a former yeah. living. So. Of course. So so my background goes back. Um, uh, I started with Diageo in Canada. Uh, and I worked um in different marketing roles. Um, I managed um one half of the portfolio than the other half. Uh, and then I um, even had um, uh, had to lead uh, the creation of a reserve business, which is like the ultra premium business. So it was more of a uh, GM role where you uh, set up your commercial goals and you set up your all the brands that are the higher end brands and how you go about that. So work on, on all the portfolio. I mean, from beer, um, from what we call white spirits and also dark spirits, of course. Uh, so everything um, that the IO had to offer, I, I worked um, in Canada. And then I moved to um, Europe and I was leading globally um, two brands, one Ciroc uh, Vodka and then the other one Sacapa Rum. So um, a bit of uh, two different brands, uh, but great um, stories behind it and and also, uh, I have to say, well, there was um, uh, a beautiful, uh, you know, liquid story and ingredients. And um, particularly for Sacapa, of course, um, being a watermelon product, I mean, it was it was quite exciting uh, to, to learn and to promote um, that type of product. Then I moved to um, to the U.S. And in the U.S., and, and that was my, my last stint with, uh, with the Agio, was I was the the, the marketing uh, director for all agave spirits, mm -hmm. so I was leading that. It was also for for Canada, US, and I had a seat on the on the global team as well, and uh, and and had some impact as well in uh, some of the decisions that Mexico had to do um, in order to uh, provide us with the best liquids. I mean, we were we were about eighty five percent of the total volume um, in profit, uh, I would say, of that of that business. So worked on that and worked for with brands like Don Julio. Uh, I worked with brands like um, De Leon. Uh, I mean, old brands as well. 
that we have. Um, we had another uh, as well that had some interactions and and when the Ayo acquire of course of course um, uh, Casamigos and and some of the mezcales. Um, so mezcales like um, you know Union um, and Pierre Realmas. So it was all agave spirits, and again, an intimate lot knowledge of this is just about the the agave uh, and the agricultural part of it, and the distillation part of it, and everything. So then, um, just to continue with it, with it, maybe maybe with your with the story. Um, so I was um, faced with a very um, tough. Um, uh, health uh, diagnosis, and and it was um, I was uh, faced with cancer. Uh, I call it now a gift, uh, but it was in the moment like very tough. It was an advanced form of cancer, and I had uh, to basically go into treatment and recovery right away. Um, and it took uh, a lot of time, and it took um, a lot of my uh, will, power, and my family's, of course, always supporting me behind behind this and. It's it was it was tough, and as part of that process, I decided if I want to stay in this world, and if I want to be uh, and seeing my four kids grow uh, the way I want to be seeing grow up, I I um, I wanted to be there, and I wanted to make some changes in my lifestyle. So let's pay attention more to what you eat. Let's pay attention more what you uh, how you uh, add your exercise in the right uh, ways, and also how you may steer away from from alcohol because you learn that. Um, all the downsides that alcohol have for many, for many, um, uh, for many people, right? There's some people that, you know, their their bodies um, can sustain certain stress levels, and and alcohol, um, as we all know, is there's no uh, safe amount. But uh, some people could, um, you know, have it. Other people, I mean, we could develop other issues with it. So. I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be very candid with you. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, being that you're also in the business the same amount of time and not more. Um, so after 20 years of professionally drinking, and I use that as a uh, yeah. is that, you know, you know, and especially when you're in the executive realm, you're in a lot of those trade shows, a lot of the meetings, a lot of the mm-hmm. night things. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've, I, as of uh, a year ago, quit drinking completely. I just finished out 12 months and it was a combination. I'll be very candid and transparent. It was a combination of health, mental and then the whole thing. And it was just, and, and I do not, by no means, I still represent breweries. I sell, I sell beer. I sell alcohol. I think it's a vital piece as, as well as I think you do for the ecosystem mm-hmm. and the industry. Um, but I was one that over time, the moderation just wasn't a thing for me. That switch, the switch disappeared, I think, over over 20 years of selling it. And I, yeah. I, I really, I had commoditized the product so much that I def, I. I had justified every instance of consumption, no matter when it was in the day, no matter to what extent, because I had believed that that's part of my job. It's part of my lifestyle. And it became an extension of me. And what the reason I say this is by no means should anybody stop drinking. But if you have if you've ever had that question, just take a second and you don't have to you don't have to you don't have to throw it all away. But I I agree with you completely is make that five second thought in your head a 20 minute thought. And yeah, people yeah. like me, it's like I have the, I have alcohol in my portfolio for people that want to consume alcohol responsibly. And I also have non-alcoholic stuff that I want people to be able to consume responsibly. For me personally, my house, my fridge is full of all these things, including including yours. So it's, uh, you know, I, I really on the flip side, what I'm going to about to, what I'm leading to is uh, five years ago, I tried to quit drinking and I couldn't do it. I, I just couldn't I couldn't do it with being out and about and, and, and being social and the beers that existed in the NA world were just not a par or so par. Yeah. And where I, I 100% give my sobriety for the past 12 months to the non-alcoholic craft beverage industry and what it's produced in the past five years. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, that's yeah. really, I mean, that's, that's as candid as I can be and as transparent and, yeah. it's, and this will be published. You're, I'm not just giving this to you. Um, yeah. I, I feel that strongly about this and people have heard me in past episodes speak as well about it. I am not a to, uh, teetotaling, uh, you know, get away from alcohol and burn, burn all the berries and the distilleries. <laughs> um, but I am a big advocate of people, especially in this industry, that if you have a moment that you're thinking things aren't under your control, Make that moment be a 30 minute internal reflection. Yeah. No, absolutely. So thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for sharing. Um, and also congratulations on 
being able to 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 manage um you know a, a, a new lifestyle that could be um you know socialization should not rely on what you drink all the time with ethanol in your hand like that that is to be and that is basically where i the last year that I was working at Diageo, I mean, I'm a professional and I was representing a brand and I was representing the uh, all the qualities and the background and the, the provenance of the product, which I did to the best of my abilities, all, all my, 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 let's say, spirits uh, background and life. But uh, that last year was tough because I wasn't drinking. I wasn't, um, I was feeling that a bit you know, ostracized in a way, like I, I was representing a brand, but I wasn't drinking it. I wasn't uh, sitting down uh, with distributors, sitting down with everyone. And that, that wasn't, that wasn't the, the right, I guess, set up for me. So that's why I decided to separate from, from them, which, uh, you know, in a very good way. I mean, um, and I separated with them and I started to think about what would be next and all the jobs, all the opportunities that I had out there, it would be all related to alcohol. And said, like, I, I don't want to do alcohol. Well, you cannot come and sell something else because what we want is your value in the alcohol world, not in the value of something else. That, that is the hardest part. That was the hardest part was exactly what you said, is the value in alcohol. And in your brain, you're like, my, my skill set is non-transferable. And yeah. what happened was when COVID hit, like a little bit before you started this business, my, all my March 16th, 2021, I'll never forget it. <laughs> All my contracts were canceled. Everybody can tell this story. What I had to do was I was like, oh, my God, what do we do? And exactly like you just said, take a second. Let's get creative. Made a phone call, a distillery a mile down the road. I said, hey, I just read the World Health Organization is allowing uh, disinfectants and sanitizer commercially. Can we do this? And they said, yeah, absolutely. You want to do it? I said, yeah. They're like, great. We're not selling anything anyway. All the contracts got canceled. The warehouse was full of, of load of shipments that were supposed to go out the door. So just wow. pallets and pallets and tractor trailers full of liquor vodka that was supposed to go and it's just sitting there for what would be uh eventually a, a year uh, of it sitting there That's and just... uh, and in that time we had to move all those out and go get another warehouse and start producing 250 gallon drums of 200 proof ethanol and making sanitizer commercially which then led into masks tests sales a whole portfolio so where that came, i want to support you again because we're we are kindred spirits yeah. and i i fought for a year being trying to only stay in alcohol because I believe that was my only value. And it all it took was a pandemic for my hard headed noggin to make me realize that my skill set was universally transferable. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And that that that's that is it's always it's it's always um you know it's a realization that we all have and uh and 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 then we, we realize okay we, we realize there's a lot of things that yeah. we can do beyond that and there's we can expand. So then I made the decision to I said, listen, what I can do is is pretty much um, offer like a modern way of socializing. I mean, I saw people that already, I mean, I, this is not new. I mean, for 15 years, I saw always the consumption uh, per capita of alcohol coming down. Mm -hmm. The value was going up because that's what we're doing. We, we're premiumizing the category and then the dollar value was always, but overall, when you look at total liters, liters of alcohol consumed in the world, is always coming, going down, going down for many years. Now it's like 15, even more years. Yeah. So, but then I started to say like, okay, what if, what if what you have in your hand is an equivalent to an alcohol product, but it does not have ethanol and it has a different way of connecting and you have to feel, but the, the task is, 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 is really, it's is a tall task because it's like, you need to uh, give something that has the branding, that has the, taste that has the ingredients and the provenance that you could feel that you can rival uh uh yeah you know a, 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 um, a cocktail that you made with um tequila or you make with a bourbon or you make with a, anything else so it's not easy and and we went through um through a, a you know many months of development trying to get to what could be that experience and what could be something different that we can offer that is valid because what we had in the market and what we've seen in the market is still uh, the majority, um, at least from a non non beer perspective, because uh, I think um, beer is, as you said, getting very close, and and it is actually feeling people are feeling great drinking uh, a, a a great um, beer that is uh, non alcoholic nowadays. But in the world of um, cocktails or the world of spirits, we still 
like miles away of what everything should be. Um, and so we are just adding, you know, a, a, a take on it, a perspective that is, let's have good ingredients. Let's anchor everything in what agave can give us, for instance, but agave without distillation, fermentation and distillation. So we want to just make sure that what are the ingredients and the raw materials that we can add that have the same um, attributes that an alcoholic beverage could have. So we want to treat people like an adult, right? We want to make sure that we're not adding just sugar just because, or we're not adding like mock-up uh, like any non-nutritive sweeteners just because um, we just want to add like good stuff uh, so people can really uh, drink and, and feel feel better. And then from a functional aspect is that the big question, right? Alcohol, you and I, we, we're drinking alcohol as well, not only for the social um, uh, lubrication, but it's also it also causes in your body uh, certain changes that allows you to, you know, take the edge off of some people. I mean, then for others, like, you take too much of it, but <laughs> it is, but it is, it, it really gives you a sense of more uh, relaxation. So then we look into, okay, is there any functional um, ingredients that could be, um, that could not, I mean, not being harmful can deliver some good impact on your body. And that's what we're looking for, instance, to adaptogens, which it's not that you drink one and you're going to feel great. We say we don't say that and we just never would say it. But we're giving you a leg up on that journey that you can have uh, understanding that there's other things that you can do in order to feel better and socialize and have a, a, a great brand in your hands. Absolutely, Rudy. Well, show me, tell me a little bit about uh, with the products you have now with Parch, the Agave Cocktails Non-Alcoholic. Walk me through the different, you have three SKUs, which is awesome to kind of focus in on. I, I assume that that's going to be adding, or you have any aspirations of, of more this year in 2024? Yeah, yeah. so so we started, we launched with um, with two, and okay. we launched to one is a, a prickly paloma, and that is a, a riff on a paloma. So everything is anchored, and just to give you a, a bit of a, a perspective, so all our philosophy is um, these are inspired by the Sonoran Desert. And the Sonoran Desert, of course, it is um, a very harsh environment to grow anything. However, uh, the world gives us uh, gives us like things that you would never see um, that are that are um, raw material or ingredients for something special. So we look at that and we said, okay, what if we can take anything, everything that you see in here, and you try to come with a recipe that allows you to have a different experience. So agave need uh, basically very low irrigation. Um, so that is our anchor, and that's why we're doing it. People know about it, so it's good as well. Um, and the way that we want to do it is is something special using organic blue agave, same as you have in a in a fine tequila or use it for fine tequila. But we do that. We also let's look at um, cactus fruit. So cactus fruit, how it comes, and really, like, usually there's not a lot of commercial use of, use of that. And and I think with this, we're, we're putting a spotlight as well on, on that great crop. And then look at the botanicals, right? All the different botanicals that go around it and things that smell, look, and taste completely different. So we put it all together. So the first um, expression is a prickly paloma, um, and it is a very um, juicy um, cocktail that it has hibiscus uh, as as one of the key ingredients, of course, lime juice, um, and it really feels like a, a non-alcoholic a paloma, but instead of grapefruit, we do have some grape, grapefruit bitters, but instead of grapefruit, it is a, a prickly paloma, so it's a prickly pear juice, uh, and that prickly pear juice is, is, is what it's bringing up there. So that is, and then we added the adaptogens that we can talk about like, later, but that is one. The other one is what we call a spiced piñarita. And what it is, is a riff on a, on a, on a spicy me mezcalita, pineapple mezcalita. So what it is, is it has some roasted um, pineapple with roasted cayenne. And that brings a lot of the heat. Uh, we add pineapple as well. And, and it comes with all the bitters that we put that we even put molly bitters. It has a very specific and unique flavor that not a lot of products have out there. And we feel that that is for the people that are like cocktail driven uh, and very love any mezcal or any cocktail like that. 
um, a smoky cocktail. I mean, that is one drink that they they really appreciate. So those are the two. And we're launching, we, we pre-launch it, and, and now it's going to be in the market in the next couple of months. It's going to be the Desert Margarita. And what it is, is a taken margarita, but we added like triple citrus. We are doing it like uh, tamarind, tangerine, um, and, and also some orange um, or orange uh, peels and orange flavors as well into it, which is, it comes out like a, a beautiful, beautiful um, uh, margarita. And I have to say, I've tried all of, all of the margaritas out there, all the non-alcoholic margaritas. And of course, in my past, I tried many of those as well, the alcoholic ones. But I have to say this one, I think is going to turn heads because it's something that is, I never tasted something that um, delicious. So that would be, that, that's a bit of a, um, uh, you know, a teaser for, for what this, this desert margarita is going to be. And by the way, we use... Um, in all of them, we use Sonoran sea salt. Um, the Sonoran sea salt is like wild harvested uh, in the, you know, in, in this Gulf of California, uh, that, that area, the, the Sonoran Desert also goes into the, the Gulf. And that is exactly how uh, we, we we get some product from them. It's the, it's the best salt in the world, um, by the way. And, and that is a, it's a wonderful ingredient that we use as well. So careful ingredients. Um, full of provenance. We have anchored um, agave, uh, uh, organic agave as the anchor, and we use three parts of agave. We use uh, the agave nectar, of course. We use uh, the fiber, which is the inulin, and we use agave bitters. So that's why our flavor is a bit different than um, a lot of other uh, great competitors that we have out there. Excellent. We and your um, your your packaging and, and and marketing and everything like that. It's it's so a lot of brands have trouble like being how do we regionally put ourselves out there without really regionally subjecting ourselves to being stuck in our region. And I think you guys did a great job of localizing your marketing while not over localizing it to where you ex excluded, you know, the East Coast or the Pacific Northwest or the Midwest or anything like that. I think you just you took it and said, this is our culture and we're going to show it through our design as opposed to saying it overtly to you. And I think that, like, I just want to compliment you on that as well, because, like, obviously, you, I, it makes sense, obviously, with your history and marketing and everything like that. You don't need me to tell you and give you validation, but I just, I want you to know I was paying attention. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Thank you. Thank you. It, it really, it really, I mean, that is the the product from, um, uh, also, we have some partners, um, a studio, a creative studio, and we have uh, great humans um, that are very talented, and they were able to express um, the concept in the right ways and and they took this uh, to heart and they put a lot of um, effort and they keep putting a lot of effort in everything that we do uh, from a design visual identity that we have but it really it always speaks to our ethos it always it always speaks to our brand um, and and it, it always it is um, it, it, you're right it, it really stands out a bit um, compared to what the other ones um, uh, or other other beverages are out there so we're, we're very excited and, and humble at the same time by by it excellent hey well thank you so much Rudy I don't want to take up too much of your time today but I will I will let you know that I appreciate this conversation I want to give you a few seconds there to give out any social media handles or anything upcoming for 2024 I know you said you guys have an aggressive growth plan so maybe um, think about like a little bit regionally, what are some top places maybe people can find you? And if you want to give a shout out to your distributors as well. So, yeah, of course. Thank you. So yeah, 2024. So we are starting with a beer bang. Uh, we have some, um, uh, great news coming up. Um, it is, I don't know when this podcast is going to, um, come alive, but it is dry January right now. So there's a lot of momentum. Once again, a lot of people jumping on the, on the mindful drinking experience, which is great. And we have um, two accounts uh, that are large accounts. I, I, I won't say, but it was it, it is the two accounts that are going to just uh, change the trajectory uh, significantly for us. Um, number one. Number two, we have uh, Margarita that is launching. Uh, we have also some other partnerships and we're going to launch our first collaboration with one formidable uh, partner, which is Daybreaker. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a good of, of uh yeah wake up and dance and and um and, and living a, a beautiful life uh as well in the mornings and in the, the afternoons and it's it's great and then we also have 
Um, yeah, we have aggressive growth plans uh, over over the course of uh, 2024. Uh, distributors were welcoming uh, two new distributors in places that are always that are thriving because this is not a Nate, you know, this is not only now, this mm-hmm. is not a LA New York game. This is not like that. Like this momentum, this trend, what consumers are everywhere. And what you see in the Midwest, it is incredible. What you see in places like the Carolinas, it's incredible. Like people are really, you know, taking this as a real, real category. It's not a fad. Uh, so we are welcoming two distributors there. Uh, we have as an anchor distributor for the grocery channel, um, Kehi. Um, and Kehi, I mean, they are um, the big machine. Uh, there's, there's, there's great, there's amazing things about them. There's all the things that I wish they could change. But listen, uh, we all were in this together and we're trying to do that. And, and we also are um, just getting set up with um, another big one so with UNFI. So that would allow us to come into um, other other grocery um, banners that are where our consumer, you know, are. So that's uh, that's basically the, the top line. Um, we're very excited about the momentum. And thank you uh, for just um, uh, placing a, a, a bit of a spotlight um, on on us. So uh, really appreciate it. And, and, and we have to keep the conversation going. Are you looking for a way to grow your business, reach new customers and increase your sales? If so, you need the Free Mind Group, founded in 2008 and a provider of creative and strategic solutions for the food and beverage industry. Whether you need branding, marketing, product development, or innovation, the Free Mind Group can help you achieve your goals and unleash your potential. Visit our website at thefreemindgroup.com and get a free consultation today. Thank you for listening. See you next time.